will be uploaded at some point and, and entered into the meeting notes. Um, because we are doing this virtually through Zoom uh, too, we are going to have our public comments uh, be submitted uh, via email. And I'm going to put that in our chat box right now. Now the email that I'm putting in here uh, is the board.esd401 uh, email. That email only goes to board members. Um, so all of the board members um, will receive that. Um, I don't think that copied and pasted very well. All of the board members will uh, receive that and they will see it uh, and you will receive a response um, from the board chair uh, from me within 24 hours. That did not copy and paste, so I'm gonna type this in really quick. Uh, that is the email uh, to submit public comment. All right, and with those two points of order, let's please move on to the Pledge of Allegiance in which Matt uh, has been willing to lead. All right, please move your headgear. And three, two, one. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for doing that. Uh, we are joined by all of the board members uh, and everyone's on a different spot uh, on, on the screen. So uh, we are joined by Meg Ludlam, Jason White, Jennifer Hackett, Dan Schisler, our amazing student reps, Amethyst Martinez, Mackenzie Bandy, um, our, our superintendent, Superintendent Haberer, our district administrators, Brian Aiken, Kim Snyder, and Kelly Kronbauer. Thank you for coming. Um, and with that, we can go on to the consent agenda. Does anyone have any questions about the consent agenda? Point of clarification in that consent agenda, item G is a resolution of suspension of policy. We did already pass that resolution in our um, emergency meeting, but uh, protocol is that yes, we, we passed the emergency meeting, but now it goes on our, in our consent agenda on our next uh, meeting. So that is why it is there. Is there a motion to pass the consent agenda? I move that we pass the con consent agenda as presented. I second. Meg has moved and Jennifer has seconded. Um, all those in favor say aye. Uh, with this aye. Name. Let's do aye. a roll call vote again, please. Okay, as I say, I'm going to do a roll call vote. Um, okay, uh, Jennifer? Aye. Jason? Aye. Meg? She said aye. Uh, Dan? Aye. And I say aye. So consent agenda passes. So I'll do a roll call vote every time, sorry. All right, so on to policy. We'll start with policy 6114, gifts or donations. We, we discussed this, uh, right? We, are, we, are, we have some changes in there from our study session. So I move that we approve the policy with the changes that we discussed in the study session. I'll second it. Any further discussion? Do we need to let the public know what um, what the changes are? The changes are noted in the study session minutes. Okay, because it, it does affect them. I mean, it allows them to be a little more involved is all. Dan, I think I'd also point out the document that sh the policy that's shared, it actually lists out what the language is that um, was that we're that we're um, deleting or, or omitting. So oh, I think okay, good. Really clear. Yeah. Okay. No, it's a good it's a good point. Um, so uh, we have a motion and a second on on policy 6114 with changes. All right, um, all, I'm gonna do a roll call vote on it again. All those, I can't do all those in here, sorry. So uh, Meg. Sorry. 
She said aye. Uh, Jennifer? Aye. Jason? Aye. Dan? Aye. And I say aye. So policy 6114 uh, is passed. Policy 3424, opioid-related overdose reversal. I move that we pass this policy. I forgot the number, sorry. I second. Jason has moved and Jennifer has seconded uh, policy 3424. Any further questions? All right, so roll call vote, Meg. Aye. Jennifer? Aye. Jason? Aye. Dan? Aye. And I vote aye. Policy 3424 passes. Policy 2409, credit for competency proficiency. This one does have uh, significant changes, including the title. Those will also be noted <laughs> in the study session notes. I move that we pass policies 2409 as modified or as presented. I'll second. Jennifer has moved and Jason has seconded. Is there any further discussion? All right, roll call vote. Jennifer? Aye. Jason? Aye. Meg? Dan? Aye. And I vote aye. So policy 2409, 2409 passes. Policy 3432, um, emergencies. I move that we approve policy 3432 as we sit at home in the middle of our emergency. I'll second. Uh, Jennifer has moved and Dan has seconded. Any further discussion? Okay, I'll call the roll call vote. Meg? Aye. Jason? Aye. Jennifer? Aye. Dan? Aye. And I vote aye. The policy 3432 passes. Policy 5253. Maintaining professional staff student boundaries. I move that we approve policy 5253. I'll second. Jennifer has moved and Dan has seconded. Is there any further discussion? All right, roll call vote. Dan? Aye. Jennifer? Aye. Jason? Aye. Meg? Aye. And I vote aye. Um, policy 5253 passes. All right, you guys, that is our policy section. Uh, now we're going to go on to administration. So A is the closure update and report, the OSP updates. Um, we have received the OSPI updates. Um, the administration has uh, informed us and kept us in the loop on that. Uh, they are coming fast and they uh, come at least, it feels like at least daily, sometimes more. Uh, we did receive an update on this, the ones that are presented in here. Uh, so the board feels comfortable that we were already updated on this and the new ones that were released, uh, I, I think it was yesterday was the, was the release and I'm sure there's gonna be more this week. Um, those will be placed on the agenda also, and we'll receive an update. Uh, but uh, I am thankful that this is on the agenda so that the public is aware of what, the OS, of what the OSPI updates are. But at this point, the board does not need further uh, information for our administrators. Uh, B is the RFP approval. And I do not know, I think Brian's taking the lead on this one. Okay. Yes, board members. Um, that is for the uh, uh, the selection of our of our general contractor for the Lincoln Elementary remodel. We had we had two wonderful contractors, great builders of schools, in the in the final in the final set. Uh, both did a really really good job on the process. Um, Garco really was the unanimous choice of the selection team, prim primarily because. 
of their uh, their 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 in depth knowledge of of uh, us as a school district and as a community, and they took a more uniquely Ellensburg approach through through their uh, interview process. And so, mission of the team is is to uh, approve Garco as our as our contractor for Lincoln. So I move that we approve Garco as the contractor for the Lincoln Elementary School project. I second, and I want to comment that it was the, both uh, applicants were very good, but Garco was better, and I'm enthusiastic about continuing to work. Uh, so we have a motion by Jennifer and a second by Meg. Um, is there any other further discussion? All right, this will be another roll call vote. Um, Meg? Aye. Jason? Aye. Jennifer? Uh, I think she said aye. Uh, Dan? That was an aye. Okay. Aye. Dan, Dan said aye. Uh, and I also say aye. Uh, so that RFP is approved. Um, thank you for everyone who worked on that too. I, I think Dan was also part of that and Meg and that team uh, meeting. Uh, that's a lot going on uh, for everyone right now. And it's exciting that that's continuing. Uh, I missed out on that because I was out of the country for a little while. Yes, Dan, you were not so thank yous because you were enjoying yourself in Peru. So well, that's why I did it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that's, a, that's a lot of work to keep going on uh, and important work. Uh, next is uh, business, the financial report. Board members, you have uh, January reports in front of you and, and I'm hoping you've had a chance to read through those. Uh, there, there's a lot of questions right now swirling around with the COVID-19 and, and the impact on on our district finances as, as we go forward. I know in study session, I had a great question from, from Jason earlier and, and we're, all, we're all kind of wondering just as you all are, how this is gonna impact our, our, our business. Uh, an interesting component of our finances this year is enrollment and, and we, we approved enrollment um, for the March on the agenda, but What's interesting here is that we're no longer taking them for the rest of the year. And as, as you recall, we paid based on an average running, uh, well, a running average of our, of our student count for the year. And so the I has actually estimated what our enrollment would be for the, for, for the remaining count months, which would be April, May, and June. And the estimate is actually pretty favorable for us. We're, we're gonna finish we're going to finish uh, around 31. Uh, let me see if I can do it. We're going to finish at uh, 3,270 FTEs. And if you recall, our, our budget was 3,090 FTEs. And so that's going to be positive for, for this year for us. Um, a couple of things to, to mention uh, on, on, on my financial report. I, I, Giving you a budget up each time, and a lot's changed. But obviously, um, we were, we were hoping to uh, uh, put the the third final version on on our draft budget and, and to go to a form with with changes that happened again. So goes the business team and the HR team and Kim for coming together and, and making those changes again. So, so more versions of changes with, with our budget draft, but uh, the latest change, uh, the governor vetoed most of the money that was earmarked for K-12 school districts. Uh, I guess the, the, the good thing, if there is a good thing there, is we weren't gonna get any of that new money anyways. And so it really wasn't, really wasn't a takeaway for us here in Ellensburg, but, um, as soon as we have a chance to get back together as a staff and, and meet and talk and make sure we've all the bases uh, covered, we, we have the invite for our budget committee waiting and, and, and ready to go and, and we will get that process started. Um, other than that, that's all I have for, for budget. Are there questions? 
questions at all. Uh, <clears throat> I'm so busy unmuting, I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, <laughs> I thought, I thought we, uh, <laughs> We're not going to go. <clears throat> excuse me. We're not going to go ahead with the budget committee, given that uh, whoever it was, Mary, what's her last name? Uh, Truca, something like that. Trucaca, something like that. Said that we really should have done it a lot sooner, and it would kind of be uh, pointless at this point. Meg, I, I think I, one. Uh, yes. Meg, we we have we we have a draft budget, but. But I, I, th I think it's more, it's, it's a more of a, a, an update to our budgeting process where we're, we're, we're looking to establish a process moving forward where now we have a budget, we, we'd like to bounce that off the budget committee and, and, and uh, seek their understanding and their feedback and, and to, to further involve our community. And, and th then it, we're, we're hoping to establish a, a process moving forward because if if next year, you know, if our budget gets tighter, well, then we'll have a process in place to, to seek help and feedback from our community. And, and you know, I, I think it's just, it's, it's just a, 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 an improvement to our budget process all the way around because we should be getting feedback as much as we can. And, and uh, whether, whether uh, times fiscally are, are difficult or, or they're good, we, we should be involving, you know, our community in this process. So, so yeah, I, I understand Meg, what you're saying. It, it kind of doesn't make a whole lot of sense after the fact and the way things played out this year. And of course, not, none of us foresaw COVID-19 coming, but um, I, I think I would like you to think of it as more of a, a, a budgeting process that'll serve us well into the future and not just this year. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. <clears throat> and I, I, suspect by the time we're able to get them together it'll be time to talk about next year's budget so well not and that it was, it'll, yeah, it'll, it, it was, might end up covering two years at once that's what i mean yeah. yeah and it was my understanding that in that work we really were establishing a new way to communicate and and work with our community in this budget cycle so this was not meant just for this budget cycle this was meant for a new protocol moving forward and a new uh, bridge to the communities for understanding, uh, not just this year, not just next year, but going forth. ESD uh, has committed to working with the committee, forming a committee, and forming a committee uh, so that it, we tie in more to the community and we find um, avenues to educate. Yeah. Does anyone else have any other questions or clarity? It's tough, right? This this uh, budget, the budget's always tough, and uh, you are in the same boat as everyone else who just gets new updates every day as to what could be and what might be. But that's not going to be anymore. So go on to the next one. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah. So thank you for always providing us with that information and and highlighting it and bringing it in a easily digestible way. Well, I sat in a, a, a manager Zoom conference all afternoon today, and and uh, it's it's remarkable how everything changes every day. And guidance guidance by uh, Superintendent Reichdahl yesterday are changed as of today already, and and that's just the world that we're going to live in for a while. So we just have to be flexible, and and uh, we have to do our best. Uh, our challenge. Oh no. Last year, audio. Oh no! And that was going to be last year, right? That our challenge going forward. Okay, is it? Can you hear me? Yes. Our challenge going forward is going to be to track to track everything. So, if there's additional COVID nineteen money or bailout money from the feds, that we'll be in a position to to uh, uh, to accept it. So that's going to be our challenge. Yeah. 
Um, thank you for that update. And thank you uh, to all of the teams that are involved in that, all of the people who are working um, harder and in different ways than they envisioned. Uh, so thank you to everyone. Um, item B is the audit report. I know Meg was part of that exit interview, but I think this one uh, is also um, an update from Brian. Okay. Yes, Meg, thanks for sitting in on that. Um, that, that was the audit of our 18-19 uh, 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 financial records. Um, we, had, uh, we, we, we had a good audit. Um, uh, we had no findings or question costs. Uh, there, there was no uh, uh, deficiencies or material weaknesses in our financial statements or federal awards, any of our grants and uh, um, full compliance with with GASB and things like that so it was it, it was a, it was a good audit so there's really nothing to point out to you because their their reports just say basically what I just did there was no you know weaknesses or any problems or any findings so so I I don't know I, I need to ask Matt do, do we have have you um, accept this audit report with a motion uh, and you might I, I have it listed as such, but um, yeah. that can be a motion by the board. Okay. I think it does have to be accepted. I'll move that we accept the audit report as presented. I'll second. Dan has moved and Jennifer has seconded. Is there any further discussion? I just want to say great job. It was great to see all positive uh, May, did you want to say anything? Okay. Brian, you're having audio issues. Sometimes with audio, it helps to go off video. Sometimes, not always. Um, uh, so then we'll do a roll call vote. Um, Meg? Uh, Jennifer? Aye. Jason? Aye. Dan? Aye. And I also vote aye. And so the audit report is accepted. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so uh, now on to board reports. And the first one is bond and construction update. Well, with with the uh, the COVID nineteen and that um, our construction work is still considered essential, and uh, Garco and all of our subs are are ready and willing to work. So that's that's the positive. Um, and unfortunately, we're 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 waiting for uh, approvals and in, in in the SEPA process to to run their courses. Um, that, so that's kind of where we are with. with right now you you approved uh, uh, Garco earlier to do uh, Lincoln and uh, design and the EdSpec process is underway with Lincoln so so all three projects are are moving forward it, it's just we may sit a little bit to see if, if we can work with the city we've asked the city to give us a little bit of flexibility and, and perhaps there's some work on uh, core of some other areas that that may have already received approval from them that, that they may be able to grant us like an early work permit or something and so we're just kind of waiting to what what or if they're able to do anything with us so that's kind of where we are with construction so the uh, work thing is is would that be uh, getting into Mount Stewart early to since we don't have kids there right now No, Dan. It, it's um, we we just started a because we moved the uh, the the location of the of the new building from the south to the north of the property. Uh, we we are we are we are doing another uh, 21 day comment period right now, and and so and so we really can't do anything with that project until we're through the comment period and, and a potential appeal time time period of two weeks. However, uh, the original SEPA, if you remember, was approved last summer, 
or last fall for for uh, the the original Mount Stewart and and it and it and it detailed road improvements and 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 we don't think those road improvements really have changed and so and so one thing the city mentioned is well there might be a possibility that we could maybe get started on the on the road work or some of the areas that wouldn't be impacted by the new SEPA that we are waiting for comments so that's 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 where we are right now. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, thank you for that update. Uh, that school construction is continuing, which is uh, amazing to think about as we're all sheltering in place. Um, Dan, is there an early learning update? We actually did not have a meeting um, where I think um, <laughs> because of the COVID issues, we, we've uh, not had two, the last two meetings. So um, I'll uh, bring more updates as they come. I know the, the events are not happening either. So, um, and that's usually what I alert people to. But that's just a whole bunch of people in Hal Holmes running around with without proper distancing, of course, because they're pretty crammed in there. Anyway, um, so there's nothing happening right now with that. Understandable. Um, Jason for legislative. There is like a legislative update every day. Um, I think uh, we can thank COVID for a lot of uh, a lot to lots going on. Um, I think I would not do a probably an up to up to date um, report on that. I was trying to come up with what I would do, and I I have a feeling Ginger probably not to pawn this off on Ginger, but I have a feeling Ginger probably has more of a of an, uh, sense of what the most recent update is. I think we all are aware of what the governor just recently shared um, about K-12 uh, and the end of this and, and the rest of the school year. Um, Ginger, is there anything else that's come across recently that you wanted to share that we have not already discussed um, either here or in study session? I'd like to it's uh, to propose that at our next board meeting we could talk more about the stimulus package and uh, some of the financial relief that could be coming our way. Uh, they just released some numbers, uh, but I'd like to have that information in front of me and, and really put it together. And I think we'll have more of an idea, hopefully, by our next board meeting as far as how OSPI is going to apportion the money that they got from the federal government or that they, they will get as part of uh, what uh, our president signed. And so uh, maybe we could really make that a, I can be really intentional about pulling that together. Plus we'll just have more information since that was still fairly recent. Thank you. Uh, I don't want to put the student board members on the spot, but uh, if you feel comfortable sharing uh, or even adding on, what you said in the study session was so beautifully said and I think so pertinent that it would be awesome if it was on, uh, recorded because it really uh, was very nice. So if you feel comfortable, that would be great. Um, well, what I said earlier was in a nutshell that as a senior, especially, this is a really sad situation that we're all in right now. But one thing that has really helped me get through it is the fact that this is not for me. And the fact that all I have to do is stay home to help other people substantially. Um, I guess that that really helps your, your thought process through all of this and that these are like severely unprecedented times as well. Um, I do have a more positive update too <laughs> on top of it uh, because like due to this, I did realize that something that would be really affected were community service requirements to graduate and for all grades of high school to complete. And, um, I ended up looking for 
like potential online options and I contacted Ms. Dvojcik and she's in charge of the National Honor Society this year. So she gave me lead way to ultimately find this organization called Zooniverse, which is like a partnership between scientific professionals and regular citizens who end up kind of doing the scientific busy work that they themselves wouldn't have time to accomplish. And it's, it was super cool. It had a lot of options that kind of like, you know, they could interest anybody. Like the other day I was identifying dark spots on the surface of Mars to help them track like weather patterns. <laughs> and it's, I mean, there's just a huge range of things to do. So Ms. Dvojcek is going to present that to the National Honor Society. And I'm thinking that I'll go on our school board social media account for the student reps that we made and advocate for it there for students to see on social media. Yeah, that's my report. <laughs> Amethyst, we're not hearing you. You're off mute, but uh, we're not hearing you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. So during this time, um, there hasn't been a lot to do with school activities and all. But um, what I do know is that hopefully that seniors who are going through a lot, I mean, everyone is confused on what's going to happen, but it's also a good thing that we're staying home. As Mackenzie said, um, we're helping out our community. We're helping out people who are having, who can have troubles. We're doing this for everyone, for the world. Um, but that's all I have to say. I was wondering if I could jump in and let uh, Mackenzie and Amethyst know I did talk to Ms. Nabojcik and uh, want to make sure Sure that the hard work that uh, the student group did, the student senate did for the uh, use of cell phones, uh, that we're still going to move forward with that and give you guys a chance to share with the principal uh, and their administration. So uh, we're just waiting until things calm down a little bit uh, and we settle into a routine with our new distance learning model, but just know we're not going to let go of that and, and I definitely want to make sure you guys have that opportunity to share with the administration. So uh, these guys, the, the, our McKenzie and Amethyst and the whole Student Senate just did a remarkable job putting together uh, their ideas on what students could do uh, to help uh, with just the proper cell phone use at school. So thank you to you guys and just wanted you know we will still follow up on that. Okay. Thank you. That's awesome. <laughs> Uh, it is not on our agenda, but in this report section, I wanted to take a moment um, to recognize and uh, take a moment to reflect on the unfortunate news of a uh, long time Kittitas uh, community member who passed away due to COVID complications, uh, Andrea Bowman. She was a former school board member uh, and served um, in this capacity. She served many roles in this community. And as we're all adjusting and trying to find out uh, what's flexible, uh, I want to keep in mind what Dr. Mark Larson shared today that uh, it's not just numbers. What is happening um, really is affecting families and friends and the makeup and fabric of our lives. And so uh, Andrea Bowman will be missed uh, for all of the roles that she served. Uh, next is the superintendent's report. So I just want to start out again by just thanking our amazing ESD staff. Uh, we, they've just really pulled together teachers, administrators, paraeducators, our nutrition staff, custodian, maintenance, uh, everybody really pulling together, our nurses uh, to do what, what has been needed, which is uh, making sure that we have nutrition, that meals are being given to our students and families, uh, that we are providing the childcare for our first responders and our health personnel, uh, that we have payroll in place, uh, which we actually got out early this month uh, 
and just a kudos to our finance team and, and HR for their great work there for that to happen. Uh, and we have uh, everything that we need in place to ensure that payroll continues throughout uh, this uh, time of sheltering in place and uh, especially our continuous learning. And we went over that plan with you in the study session. And as I said there, as we move forward and as we settle into routines uh, with the use of um, digital platforms uh, and uh, get used to what kind of schedules are gonna work best for students and with teachers, uh, we definitely want to continue to look forward at what are those real enduring understandings uh, that are essential for students to master this year uh, so that they're off to a real strong start at the beginning of next year. So uh, we're definitely looking at that within this continuous learning plan. And so for my report, I thought I'd ask Matt to pull up our, on the screen, our uh, district website. Uh, we referred to it earlier, but I, I really wanted you to see it. We have a, a new employee, Maddie, who uh, did, just did an excellent job taking all of the information uh, that we've been providing and putting it in one place. So, uh, so this is the website, and if you have people contact you on, uh, with questions, this really is the key place, and I put this in my letter out to parents and staff members once the governor made his uh, announcement this week. And so when you click on these various links, you can see uh, the information you know, that we need. So if you click, Matthew, yeah, on the schedules, for example. Uh, it, it allows uh, a parent to see what's going on at all of the various schools. And uh, it's been exciting to do this because uh, teachers have been able to see uh, in a way that they haven't really seen before what, like, let's say, third grade teachers are doing at Valley View and they can see what uh, Lincoln third grade teachers are doing. And they, our teachers are amazing. They've already been uh, creating their own Zooms across the different buildings at the elementary level uh, to share ideas. And so this distance learning is really also, uh, while this is a very difficult time, uh, has opened up some new opportunities, I think, for a collaboration across the district, uh, not only with administrators, but also with teachers. So again, kudos to our staff for all of the hard work that uh, that they've been putting in uh, to distance learning as well as really all of us coming together to try to be as consistent across the district as possible so that we really do have equitable outcomes for all students. Matt, you can go back to the main page if you would. I pretty much talked about all those different areas, but you know, if you have uh, questions about the website or, or questions about those different areas, feel free to ask me. The website's really helpful, and it's nice that we can go to one spot and find this information. Um, right, as families, we're, we're also adjusting to all the schedules but it's, it's really helpful to have it all in one location. So. And that's the end of my report. Um, for those who may have joined us uh, uh, throughout the meeting, um, what I shared at the beginning of the meeting is that since this is a uh, Zoom meeting, a virtual meeting, um, and sort of I'm trying to sort out how we have public comment where people can come off mute and we turn you off mute on three minutes. Uh, we didn't want that to be as messy. Um, instead, what we've done or I've put into the chat box is the board's uh, email. Uh, so we are asking that people please submit their public comment, please submit their thoughts uh, to that email. That email only goes to board members um, and it goes to all of us. So we will see it and then the board chair, me, I will reply uh, within 24 hours um, and so that you know that we did receive it. 
uh, we want people to respond and we want people to have input. And this was uh, one of the ways that we are trying to do that now. Uh, nine, new business, proposed items for future consideration. Does anyone have proposed items? Uh, one thing that I'd like to suggest, and we mentioned this at our last uh, meeting, is to invite uh, Bo Snow and the high school admin to just talk about all the various ways that they're supporting our seniors uh, and uh, just the great work that they're doing there around credits. Uh, I think this uh, closure is, is that's, that's I know where I'm getting the most questions from uh, parents is around the high school. And so I'd love to invite their administration to come and just share with you guys. Yeah, I would appreciate that, right? Um, seniors and that experience in, in high school, that's definitely weighing on people's um, minds. That's what's happening. So I appreciate that. Jason, I saw you go off mute also. No? Yeah, part of it's timing. I think I mentioned this maybe even at our last meeting as a, a upcoming I um, we've talked about transparency policy um, and there was some work done on that um, it obviously has kind of been tabled with all the stuff that's been happening um, with COVID um, I propose that I, I think I'm on the part of the agenda setting for next uh, next time I if we can get that on the schedule I think it would be good for us to talk about in the study session um, a little bit further um, I think transparency is continues to be a, a common theme and especially with communications the way things are going uh, we need to make sure that we're being as as clear as, as possible so I I would propose that we tr still try to get that on the agenda I know uh, we have to have other things that might have more priority but um, I, I want to keep it there on the top of the list if we if we can get it in there yeah no it's definitely high priority the transparency policy is high priority um, with the new alteration in Open Public Meetings Act, can we get clarification? Can Matt or Ginger seek out clarification if we can put that on our agenda uh, because of the new rules? Yeah, I'll seek uh, clarification on that for us. The new rules do constrain us a bit, right? We can meet virtually, then we do have some constraints. So we want to make sure that we stay within those rules, but transparency is, uh, at least for me, center of our work so I appreciate every time you bring it up and I think that it should be it should be spoken about every single time um, <laughs> uh, 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 do our, our school board handbook we have um, available to everyone um, with this new um, operations procedure uh, that should be in there. I was wondering, do we have an electronic copy of that 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 we could actually go in and, and we've talked about editing it for a couple of years now and haven't done anything about it. I was wondering if um, that this might be a time that we could do that, kind of rework that book. Matt's giving us a thumb up, thumbs up, which is good, because he was the person I was going to ask for clarification on if we can do that work. Uh, it is specific to the board, and it's not technically new business, I don't believe. Um, it, once again, has to fall within those parameters. But certainly with the vote tonight of operating principles, um, that is going to have to go into the board member handbook, and the board member handbook um, deserves an update um, moving forward. So I think Matt says it can go on. So that's where we have to seek the clarification uh, is to make sure that we just follow within those parameters. Um, another topic that was brought up uh, by somebody, I think at our last meeting was really wanting an update on technology and where we're at with uh, internet access for students and uh, you know some of the use of uh, the virtual platforms that we have and so Mike Welch uh, said that he would be available at our next board meeting uh, if you'd like to have an update on that. Yes, I would like to have an update. And in that I'd also be interested in having an update on how many, you know, what we did to provide access to our students and how many of our students needed additional assistance, how many if any of our students
Can, can I just add something about that, Jennifer? Um, just so you're aware, um, because you brought it up as a topic on Ginger's update on the COVID-19, there's actually on support for online learning, there are options available for supporting students. And it's an access point on accessibility and the different ways to access that. I think it's good. I want to second what Jennifer said. Like I think that we're putting that information out, but it's also nice to know how are we um, how are we tracking that? What are our numbers? What is the lift that Ellensburg has to do specifically uh, in that? So looking for that data of how many families and students need this. And then I think that my guess is that's going to be useful information going forward uh, into next year too. And, and so you guys know, we, every school uh, already did a survey and I have the list of all of the students. Now Mike Welch has that information too. We know at every school, the students that uh, don't have internet access and so and their addresses so Mike's in the process right now of putting merging those lists together to see if it makes sense to have uh, like a mobile hotspot to put on a bus uh, those run about two thousand dollars a piece so we just want to make sure that um, you know it would be uh, that we have a con kind of a conglomeration of, of uh, places where uh, students need that internet access. We're also in the process right now of putting in uh, major hotspots for every school. So if people came within 250 feet of the school, uh, they could get that internet access. But so that's just in general what we've done so far. And our principals are great. They got those lists to me today. And uh, you know, at the elementary, it's kind of a, a handful of kids. I think a, a high school. I saw maybe about 30, 35 kids, uh, same at the middle school. So um, not as large as, as I had anticipated, but uh, we, know, we know who the kids are, at least from our first um, uh, survey that we did. And, for, and the survey wasn't electronic, it was them doing phone calls home, because obviously if they're not getting internet, they wouldn't have gotten the survey. So, it was really through personal phone calls and, and really reaching out and, and our staff just did an exceptional job making that a priority this week. So we're ready to move forward with that. And uh, I'd be excited to have Mike Welch share with you uh, in two weeks, we'll even have uh, more going in that area. If I could just add, um, I really appreciate it, Jennifer, what you added on there. I, and I thank you, Matt, for the, uh, because the board access is so important and I do hope that we will see part of that in the presentation. Um, but, uh, but security and uh, safety of our children is high priority. So with the technological um, uh, report, um, I'm really hoping to hear it, what professional development, what other, um, what has been done to really make sure that our students are secure in an electronic world and in, in electronic instruction. I know we are aware of Zoom bombing and we are aware of some of these things that are happening. Um, and I am hoping that, I'm assuming the district is doing everything it can to prevent anything like that from happening. So I'd love to hear more about that too. But I also know um, I'm in education and I'm, we're, we are working with college students online and, and doing the same thing. Um, I also know that there are, sometimes there's other limitations with technology, like I, I think it was, Ginger, I was reading your report about, um, I think no students are allowed to video back, um, and I'm sure that's for uh, security reasons, um, but there, there is some loss in, um, I know as an instructor and as an advisor, when you can't see anyone that you're talking to, you can't see, you don't get any nonverbal feedback um, sometimes that's a challenge. So I'm really interested to hear how we are moving forward, not only with the technology and the software that we're using, but also with um, professional development, with um, people's use, and then how do you engage um, students so that there is some feedback um, there. So anyway, sorry, I don't mean to go off on a tangent, but I, I'm really excited to hear um, what, what's going on. So thanks. Yeah, and I appreciate that, Jason. We uh, definitely recognize the importance of, of having students' faces, which is what I said, is let's hold off this week for 
um, having students' faces be a part of Zoom. Uh, and to your first point, absolutely, we've put in at every security piece uh, possible, and we feel that uh, we've made that platform uh, as secure as it can be. Uh, and uh, it's certainly as secure as any other platform that our IT people have researched. And uh, we wanted to give our teachers a full week just to get to under, you know, to understand how to use the Zoom itself. Uh, what are the features? How do you turn things on and off? And just to have that fluidity and also for students to feel comfortable uh, just having their voice on Zoom, just kind of a, a slow uh, stepping into the water. Uh, but definitely we're looking at next week uh, at the elementary level, probably starting uh, to allow uh, teachers to um, turn that video piece on with students. But we need to do more education with our parents and our staff still, to your point. Um, we have put out Zoom guidelines to our staff members and Mike has done the behind the scenes to turn off everything that uh, could be an issue. Uh, recording is the main thing, we can't record uh, you know, whole class student sessions uh, because that starts to cross the line with FERPA. Uh, but just having kids faces on the screen does not. Um, and so we really looked at those data privacy pieces and put all of those uh, back things and uh, those uh, different features in check that would could be a problem. Uh, but absolutely, we recognize the importance of um, interaction and uh, so we're going to start with elementary and then kind of work our way into secondary uh, but absolutely we it, it will be it'll be i look forward to the opportunity to be able to share about what we've done because i i think that uh, we have a good approach with that right now i can literally feel matt's eyes uh drilling into me right now saying this isn't on the agenda you can't but i think it's really important so matt i know but uh uh the um importance of this discussion i think is valid and i have to say uh now stepping outside of school board role into a parent role uh i am really looking forward for the option for asynchronous learning right i have four learners at home and the idea of all of them being on Zoom, on camera, interacting with a teacher in a classroom is unnerving to me. And I'm pretty okay with technology as a parent. Um, and I also worry about other people. Uh, you are very vulnerable. You've opened up a lot of your life uh, to someone, even though you think it's just your living room or just your kitchen that your first grader is sitting at. I really like the flexibility that our educators gave us this week to one, not have our Zoom cameras on, and then uh, to provide the asynchronous learning so that we can do it on our time when we can fit it into our schedule. And then three, they've been really creative about making those connections, right? This is something that flexibility that COVID is sort of teaching us that uh, we might be used to doing work in a certain way. Our standard work protocol may have looked a certain way, but now our, our learning looks and feels very different, just as much as our lives look very different. So I'm appreciative of this conversation and I think that it should continue. Um, and I'm very thankful uh, that we've not had um, required Zoom cameras either for our educators or our students. Uh, and I'm saying that as a thankful parent um, because that is a lot to wear on my shoulder because then I actually have to have a clean kitchen. No, my kitchen's always clean. No, it's not. We won't turn those Zoom meetings on. Um, so there's a lot to be spoken about in here. And that will end that because I know you're saying it's not on the agenda and then you're going to remind us. The Does other piece that I don't need an answer about it now, but when we do have a discussion about this, I would like to know how our tech equipment is holding up. I think with our, our tech levy, the Chromebooks, we would never intended to have them for all of the elementary school kids. And of course, I know a lot of kids have their own computers that they're using, but I do not need an answer now. I would just be interested in folding into the discussion how we have worked with a, a set of equipment that wasn't designed quite to fill this purpose, so how we've done. So it looks like we'll have a robust report from Mike Welch and maybe uh, our Director of Teaching and Learning will be in there too about that. Any other uh, questions? We've got a pretty full list, but does anyone have anything else to propose items for future consideration? 
All right, board calendar. I don't believe we have anything on our board calendar. Said Zoom, uh, Zoom addresses and times. Okay, I'm not seeing anything from Matt. Um, clarification and next steps. Ginger, are we good? Okay, we're good. Um, do we have an executive session? Nope, we do not have an executive session. Uh, there is the need for signing of documents. Um, I'm sure Matt will be getting in touch uh, with how we want to do that uh, and still maintain social distancing and stay within the parameters. Uh, and with that- can I, can I add to that, Tasha? Mm -hmm. I was just gonna say, um, Tasha already signed the documents, um, but if you could please email me to set up a time to meet at the district office. Uh, we do have all the warrants that need to be signed and then I will take time out of my day to meet you there. Um, we'll sign the documents and, and have it done. And then those will be placed for the business department. So Matt, is that for each of us to email you a time? Uh, yes, please. If you wanted to set up a time window or propose it, I know my schedule is fairly flexible, but if you had like an hour period where we could sign in, then you wouldn't have to come in multiple times. I think you heard that, Jennifer, there. We'll, we'll coordinate that with Matt. I think that's a good idea, Jennifer. Um, with that, we need a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn. I second it. All right, we have a move and a second for adjournment. So instead of doing a roll call, uh, can we see thumbs up, right? Matt can't say anything. All right. Uh, all right, you guys, we are adjourned. Thank you for this full meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.